everyone. Welcome to 33 Founders. Today we're here with John Friedman and Brad McNamara, who co-founded Freight Farms in 2011. By redesigning commercial agriculture to focus on people, planet, and profit, they're turning a global food crisis into a global food surplus. So thanks so much for joining us, guys. Sure. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Now, let's pretend that I'm looking to start my own fresh food business. I'm in New York City, and I'm struggling to make my dream possible, but uh, an agricultural buddy of mine tells me about this really cool Kickstarter project that he found called Freight Farms. I check you guys out, and what do you want me to do from there? Um, well, I mean, really what you want to do is uh, give us a call, hit us up online, freightfarms.com, um, and we can walk you through the process of getting you set up, you know, where you can start with one freight farm, you know, in a side lot, vacant parking lot, abandoned, whatever it is, uh, you know, we, and inside of a couple months, you'll have a freight container on your lot, plugged in, ready to go, and growing commercial scale food right there on the spot. In an interview a few months back, you shared that you guys were waiting on international orders so you could make sure that they're going to be the same quality as that we have here in the States right now. Have you guys made any progress on that? Yeah, you know, making partnerships internationally is a kind of a big task because we want to make sure that we can run quality control in each new market. Uh, you know, conversations really have started way back as early as Kickstarter and developed further. Right now we're going to focus domestically to make sure that we can uh, follow through with all those orders and make sure our, our customers are happy. Um, but you know, within the next year we'll kind of be looking at those new markets and picking which one is right to launch. Um, so I would say next six months to a year uh, we'll start looking at those a little more seriously. That'd be awesome. I'd really love to put one on the side of my office building but <laughs> what really excites me is maybe putting it in a place like Haiti where you literally just can't grow anything. But let's shift gears here for a second and talk about the journey. You guys started as United Hydroponics in 07, but you've made the pivot to freight farms in 2011. Tell us a little bit about why you did that and why you're so certain you had to make that choice. Um, I mean, I don't think for us it was so much a, a hard choice to make. Uh, like With United Hydroponics, we did a number of projects focused on the rooftop greenhouse food production space. Um, and you know, we realized that it's an interesting space that had a lot of potential, but the solution wasn't right for massive scale and a global food system. Um, so for us, it was just looking at what was out there, what was available, and realizing there was a cool solution and a great, you know, problem-solving solution in there, and we had to create it. So for us, as far as like a pivot, it was it was more the evolution of our business more than a pivot. Yeah, when we were up on the roof and kind of looking out, uh, I think the one thing we knew was that urban agriculture had potential to be a huge market and a, a new industry that's never been really born. Uh, our big thing was a design challenge of bringing all that production into a small space that you know, business owners in the urban area could just plug and play. And once we got that down, once we reached that profitability, we knew we could launch that all over the world. Uh, so that was really the uh, like Brad was saying, not so much of a shift, but a kind of redesign of the problems and solutions. Absolutely. What would you guys say is one of the biggest risks you took going in? Risks. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think I think one of the biggest risks for for me personally was going into something that was completely unknown. I mean, when we started in rooftop space, people were looking at us like we had each, you know, like you do what on rooftops with what? Mm -hmm. And when we, that started to heat up, it became a cooler space to be in. That was shortly after we left that space and then went to, you know, modular farming using optical materials that could go anywhere for everyone. And then again, we started getting those looks like what in the world. So I think it, for me, the biggest risk was just going to some where there was no track record. There was no history to base it on. It was just a feeling, dream that the two of us had. I'd agree with that. Yeah, it's a good sentiment. I yeah. think that's always the best way to do it. What do you guys wish you would have known this time last year that would have made a huge difference in your company? Wow, these are, these are tough ones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everything. I'm uh, no. um, you know, I think it's hard to tell people about what you're doing uh, because you're so focused on actually doing it. Um, so I think we we would have 
try to build the support a little bit more by just telling more people so that they could come on sooner um, and help us get more traction. You know, a lot of times you're just head down in it and working on the solution uh, until it's done, and then you say, "Okay, we're ready." Um, you know, I wish that somebody told us that you can you can tell people what you're doing, uh, and kind of experts will come out of the woodwork and and they'll want to help. Uh, so now we have just an expert team and and huge support network to really scale. But I think we could have tapped into that sooner and really been uh, a few months ahead at this point. What kind of experts are helping you guys out with this? Uh, I mean, we have a number of different different people on the team now, um, from uh, plant experts to technical experts, as well as food system. Uh, you know, because the big issue at hand is the actual food system, you know, domestically and globally. So, having all of those people kind of play together under our direction and inside of the realm of what Freight Farms is all about is pretty cool. You know, to see people who are all about high tech and connectivity and software development and realizing that they're making a real difference in how food works and how food gets to people and to them. And then on the other side, you know, the person that's just crazy about growing great plants and great food, seeing how they can work with technology and then just blowing the minds of the guys who are, have been living in food supply for years and are just now sort of seeing how it should be done. Blowing my mind and I haven't even been in food supply. So, great job. Let's take a second, though, to say we're sitting here and it's June of 2015. Where do you want Freight Farms to be? Well, that's a good one. Uh, so, by 2015, we'll, our product line will have expanded quite a bit. Uh, right now, we have uh, the leafy green machine, we call it. Uh, it. So, it's everything leafy. So, you know, your lettuce, kale, arugula, thyme, chard, mint, basil. Um, and we're coming out with a mushroom unit as well this year. So by the end of the year, we'll have a mushroom unit going out to select customers. By 2014, we'll have our vine variety unit, which is going to be all those tomatoes, your cucumbers, your pumpkins and squash, and anything that grows on a vine. Uh, so by 2015, the world should be able to make a pretty sweet salad out of <laughs> everything Prairie Farms. So and you know we want to be hitting those international markets, the Hades, the you know. Japan, the you know every place that food can't grow and needs to be imported. We want to make sure that we have presence there and we're expanding there, not just uh, in domestic markets. Where helping people who get food get fresher food. We want helping people who aren't getting food just get on the map as far as food goes. <laughs>